You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is David Smith, Senior Analyst for the Morgan Report, which you can find online at Silver-Investor.com. Welcome to the show, David. It's great to be back, Jim. Yes, you've been, uh, I guess, uh, hanging out with the gauchos in Argentina for the past little while and got to see up close and personal the effects of rampant inflation in Argentina and how you're concerned it may be coming this way. I really did, Jim. I was down there for several weeks, and my most of my time was spent catching and releasing large sea trout and rainbows on flies, but I also visited a mining company, uh, and I talked to the locals, and I paid attention to what's going on in, in the country. Um, as you know, the peso was divided by 15% a few weeks ago overnight, and it continues to devalue. When I visited uh, Argentina uh, five or six years ago, and I've been there several times since, but it was about three pesos to the dollar. Now it's 10, according to the government, and about 14 or 15 on the blue market. So inflation is moving up uh, 25% at least. Uh, that's the official rate. And uh, it's starting to have interesting effects on people's buying habits. What are they doing? I mean, are they stocking up? Can they find anything at a reasonable price? Or, um, I mean, what do you do? Just grow vegetables in your back garden and, and hope that's enough to get by on? What's going on? Well, things are still pretty much available, but there's this there's a shift going on. And the Argentinians have undergone this several times in the past 30 or 40 years. So they, they know the drill. And what happens is that prices start going up, so they start hoarding things. And, of course, what happens in the stores is the stores are afraid to sell everything they have because they know that in a week they can get more for it. And also, if they sell what they have, they don't know when or if more product is coming in and what that's going to charge. And so that creates um, stoppages in the system of supplying the public. And as things get more intense, this gets worse. And so some of that's going on. Also, I'm noticing things like when you go to a restaurant, uh, you're not allowed to put a tip on the visa charge because you can think about it this way. Who knows how much that tip is going to be worth in pesos when they finally get around to crediting the account. So they want cash, uh, either pesos or much more preferably U.S. dollars for their tip. Wow. And I mean, just a few months ago, people were telling me the U.S. dollar is going to go and take a big dump because the country owes so much money. Well, it's worth so much more now than a Canadian dollar and worth so much more than so many other currencies around the world. We can't predict anything anymore, can we? Currently, it's relatively strong, and that's the thing to remember, because all paper currencies have inherent weaknesses, and indeed, they all go to zero at some point in the future. And we're a ways from that now, but if you think about it, the U.S. dollar, in terms of purchasing power, is worth about two cents compared to what it was in 1913. So uh, we've had kind of a silent devaluation, uh, but the point is people still have confidence in it uh, because it's been the reserve currency around the world. And that's starting to change, too, as the yuan edges in and takes over uh, more and more of that role. Uh, and at some point, the Chinese may well have a gold-backed currency within a few years. Uh, so this is an evolving thing. But people that think that they can stay within paper currency of any denomination and not have some precious metals uh, in their uh, portfolio are really going to be in for a rude awakening over the next three, uh, next few years, in my view. David, we've been talking about Argentina and their hyperinflation and how it might relate to us. Well, you said this probably will relate what's going to happen to gold, silver, platinum, palladium, other things that we find very precious, even some commodities, uh, sugar, coffee going up like crazy. When, when will we see this effect here, and what can we do to protect ourselves from it? Predicting when is very difficult, but I think it's more important to predict if. And I think the if is not not really if, it's it's when it's going to happen. And if you get it yourself ahead of time protected, you're going to be well off. But if you just wait until it's obvious to everybody, then it will be too late. Uh, we are going to approach a situation over the next few years where gold and silver demand absolutely skyrockets. It's already taking place around the world. Uh, even in the United States, for example, we're still setting records of monthly purchases by the public of American silver eagles. And the gold uh, purchasing is not as robust, but in that regard, the gold price is really determined elsewhere, not so much in U.S. purchases of gold eagles, but what's going on in China and India. They're going to be and continue to be the main drivers of gold uh, supply versus demand. And so I think we'll see a very similar situation eventually 
in coin shops and uh, purchase, public purchasing areas in the United States and, and Canada that we're starting to see in Argentina with basic supplies, and that being that people that have the gold and silver to sell in their shops are going to start getting nervous about selling it because they don't know when they're going to get more and what it's going to cost them. And they also know that if they wait a little bit with rising prices, they'll get more next week than they did this week. And that situation isn't here yet, but it's on the horizon. And as the supply-demand matrix gets more twisted out of shape, you're going to see that start happening. So people feel that reliably they can go down to their shop and buy some gold and silver, but they're going to find that that's eventually going to become harder and harder and finally non-existent. Not to mention that what they buy is going to carry a much higher premium than it does now because premium rises in expectation of demand versus supply. And you're going to start seeing that double whammy. So, again, anyone who still hasn't figured it out is going to find themselves not just behind the curve at some point, but outside of the curve. We know China last year uh, virtually or practically bought up every piece of physical gold produced. Could you get your hands on five pounds of gold right now at a reasonable price? A couple of my friends made relatively small purchases uh, about six weeks ago at uh, one of the larger uh, bullion producers in this country, and they uh, normally would have been able to go in and, and get something, have it uh, picked up maybe that week. Uh, they just took delivery on it a couple days ago. So, they, you know, they weren't expecting that kind of a lead, and that's when we don't even have the perceived shortages that are going to be the case in reality down the line. So it's just um, it's just hard for me to understand how people want to wait until they really know something's going to happen and then think they can do something about it because they're going to be sorely disappointed. Does the U.S. have any gold in Fort Knox? Well, that's been a question on a lot of people's minds for many years, especially after Germany requested a small amount of their gold to be returned to them last year, and they were told it would take seven or eight years to get that about 20% of the gold that they have been storing supposedly in the United States for many years. So I think that's part of the confidence picture. And as more countries start to ask, where's my gold, that confidence is going to erode more and more. And the system is going to become so dynamic that even a small amount of metal in your hand is going to be a tremendous confidence booster to you and be a way to help protect some of your wealth. There's a saying that we all lose during these times but the person that loses the least comes out to be the winner. That's a sad reality, but that's the reality we're living in. And if you want to try to lose less than most other people you know, you're going to have to respond before they do. But if every country said that had uh, stored gold in the U.S., said we want our gold and we want it today, is that going if to that, create international tension? As David Morgan says, you know, the changes in price and in supply occur on the margins. And so it won't have to take every country asking that. It will only take a few more, and you'll get this cascading effect. So um, it's just, uh, you know, after I observed things in Argentina and saw how they deteriorated from the standpoint of uh, purchasing power over the last, uh, even the last few years, it was slow and then more quickly, and then at some point here in the future, it's going to be rapid, where instead of 20% devaluation overnight, it's going to be 60. And sadly, it looks like the peso is going to go back down into the dustbin like it has the last several times, because when you pursue the same policies, you get the same outcome. So it really is interesting to see. They've got large um, import duty taxes on things. Uh, one of the guides that uh, I work with, a pair of wages that would cost $350 in the United States, cost him over $1,200 U.S. in Buenos Aires to purchase those same pair of wages. So that it just tells you what a crushing effect that that places on people that uh, need to buy for their own professional uh, work uh, products that are sold outside the country. Very, very sad for the Argentines, and hopefully a new day will rise uh, for them sometime in the next few years. The Argentines uh, have a very difficult time buying the metals because they don't have a lot of people that do business there, plus there's not much of a market where they can sell it to redeem it for purchases that they need. But in Canada and the United States, it's really quite easy to do that now. You go to a trusted coin shop or you go to one of the uh, trusted uh, metals exchanges uh, that have a good record of uh, being honest with their dealings, and uh, you make a purchase, and you pay the insurance and the, and the shipping costs on it, and then you take delivery and you put it someplace where you have control over it, whether it's in the hole in the ground or in your backyard someplace, uh, in a box or 
uh, you know, under your bed or whatever, but someplace where you know you've got confidence that it's there and, and you'll have it if you need it. But there's a saying that silver will food, feed your family and gold will protect your life. And so uh, that is really true today as it was several thousand years ago. Thanks a lot for chatting with us, David, and uh, welcome back to this side of the planet. Thank you, Jim. It's been great talking with you, and I think uh, 2014 is going to be an incredibly exciting uh, year for people in mining stocks and in the metals. So hang in there and don't become a sold-out bull just because prices are rising and you think they're going to start falling again. My guest has been David Smith, Senior Analyst for The Morgan Report, which you can find online at silver-investor.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio. Find us on Twitter at TalkDigitalNet. You can contact us at info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard.